Recently, I'd ranked up to level 1000 in GTA Online. In that time, I've made over $1.2 billion, spent over $740 million, played over 7,000 hours, and killed almost 20,000 players. I've bought every business and property I could, owned around 300 vehicles, all the helicopters and planes I could ever want, and generally act like money is not an issue. So I wondered what it would be like to get rid of all of that wealth and start all over again. This is my journey on how I went from riches to rags. Previously on Riches to Rags. It was now time to invest in a bunker. I opted for the chum ass bunker. Now it was time to meet Agent 47, who simply couldn't wait to be in the next episode of Riches to Rags. Hey, hey, hurry the fuck up! You wanna make real money? Dirty little secret for you. It's in arms. Log into the network, request a resupply, and bring the hardware back here. Unfortunately, after all that, the only upgrade that I could afford was the security, which meant I would have to earn some extra cash through other means. But Agent 47 refused to help me out until I'd given in some man love. Is there a room in the back or something? 47 was so happy about appearing in this episode of Riches to Rags that he started to tell my teammates all about me. Exceedingly vain and self-absorbed man, brilliant at everything he does. Before we got started, we played a game of charades where 47 acted out his favourite terrorist attack. Once they had hit their checkpoint, it was now my job to get everyone else to say hello to my little friend. Say hello to my little friend! Now it was just a case of collecting everyone and flying off into the sunset. With all this extra money earned, I can now afford my bunker equipment upgrade. And we're back again. And in the words of Ice Cube, today was a good day. As Rockstar had given me a cool $1 million just for logging in. However, it wasn't long before Lester got wind of our prison break heist and called me like he was my jealous girlfriend and I'd just been caught cheating on him. That wasn't you, was it? Bolingbrook? Because I had forgotten to put the $1 million gift from Rockstar in the last episode, which was spent on buying a bunker upgrade, it meant I was pretty poor again and needed to earn some quick cash. So I sold some bunker product, then thought I'd go and see Joe to see if he had any more cheese that he'd like me to get. Lamar, being the untrustworthy kind of guy that he is, asked me to check to see if Joe has any other cheese hidden anywhere else. Maybe you can stick your hand up his ass. Yeah. But I soon changed my mind after loading into a job with these noobs. Instead, I bought a good friend's Hakutru drag and completed the time trial. Two minutes and 36 seconds later, I'm $102,000 richer. Still a bit short of the money I needed to purchase the final upgrade for the bunker, I did some CEO work as it was double money this week. We did headhunter, point to point, a client job, transporter, headhunter again, another client job, another point to point, Another client job, and another headhunter. Ah yes, and I danced in a nightclub to no music in the middle of the day. Yeah, I'm Tony Prince. After all of that, I now had enough money to purchase the final upgrade for my bunker. This now, of course, left me poor again, so I needed to earn some more money. I thought the best way would be to join some other people to help them with their casino heist, seeing as I'm a two-time record holder for most money taken out of the vault. But these noobs clearly didn't recognise greatness when they see it, and promptly quit the job. My next brilliant idea was to try out the arena was, as it was triple money. My plan was simple. Sit up here until I had to jump off and escape. With 
With that idea going to hell, I tried plan B, which was to drive around as fast as I could. Now just as long as I drove around and stay out of trouble, and my controller didn't die, I should be good. After another bunker selling mission, my funds were looking good. So good in fact that Jesus cleared a space for me in heaven by first throwing someone else out. It was now time to rob the casino again. Artwork, nice. Not really my taste, but assets are still going crazy and we can make a small fortune. Come back when you're ready. I was stunned to see that one way of robbing the casino was group sex, but then I remembered that this was Lester's plan, so it all made sense, really. If we're going in as a group sex team, we'll need an armored car to begin with. I know they do regular runs to the diamond, but nah, that would draw way too much attention. Here, uh, give me a second. Junus kindly lent me his mark to oppressor, which was the least he could do, really. Can I have a B in the chat for Boo Kinnear? <laughs> Wait, pick me up. Whoa! Are you for real? He just absolutely flattened me. And it's over, that's it. That's it, it's, it's over. He just smashed me to pieces with the f***ing vigilante. Oh, f*** it out, Junus! This mission sucked, as it meant going all the way to Palato Bay to pick up this slow ass truck and drive it all the way back to my arcade. The old group sex con. <laughs> Why do I love saying that? Hmm. Well, if you're keeping count, we still need outfits, security passes, and the plate of an armored car, which is on the casino's roster. Our next mission was to steal some outfits for our group sex, where we had to sneak into this yard without being spotted. And if that failed, we'd make several more widows and orphan children. Uh-oh, you've been made. Maybe they aren't as stupid as they look. Too bad for them. You'll need to wipe them out. No witnesses. Then after sourcing everything else we need, we were ready to rock and roll. Okay, they're expecting these chips today, so get over there in the group sex van. Unless you're total idiots, you'll walk in without any problems. Seeing as we didn't want to alert anyone, especially the cops, I made sure that I drove with extreme caution. Uh, only, I don't have kids. Just some uh, pretty basic AI experiments that swear at me in Russia and want to destroy the world. <laughs> you know, we all love it our own ways. Uh, where were we? Oh, yeah. Let's rob this thing. Okay, you're there. Drive in past the garage entrance and follow the road to the racetrack. Don't forget, you are private security. Like a cop who couldn't pass the fitness test or the psyche valve. Now play it cool. You're doing your usual day-to-day -day delivery job. Once inside the casino, we played it cool, ensuring we'd not make any of the security suspicious. You're earlier than expected. This gonna check your visa number? Chip delivery, huh? Uh, sure, but go straight through and leave her on the left. You can take the elevator or stairs down to the vault. Next security check's coming up. You can do this. You can keep her cool. Don't be nervous, you know? Who's nervous? Not this sweaty mess in a gaming chair. <laughs> Y'all here for the vault, yeah? Alright, you're gonna need your key cards to get into the man trap there. Two card system. Swipe at the same time. As always, the fastest way through the man trap was to jump. Jump around! Jump around! Oh, oh, you're here. Why didn't they say something? Man, they never tell me nothing, you know? <sighs> I'll get it open for you. <clears throat> we then had to face the toughest opponent of all, the casino end-level boss. Oh, that's a heavy door. Ain't much getting through here. There. <laughs> it might seem crazy what I'm about to say.
all of the artwork was behind locked cages, so we had to use our expert hacking skills. But only for a while. If the system goes quiet for too long, it triggers the alarm as a fail safe. And, uh, did I mention that if the alarm goes off in here, they'll flood the place with nerve agent? No? Okay, well, I'm mentioning it now. My favourite piece of art was this man woman, who I believe is Abby from The Last of Us Part 2. We're still under the radar. Perfect. Perfect. People, that is the mother load. <laughs> we cleaned him out. Okay, let's see if we can make the way out as smooth as the way in. Now stay calm. Back the way you came through the checkpoint. Nothing to see here. Time to change your outfits. We need a fresh start. It was at this moment that William knew. He fucked up. You're gonna make it out of here under the radar. Alright, look busy and shout LSFD if anyone gets in your way. They're closing in on us. We need to pick up the pace. Security is sweeping the whole building. Stay one step ahead or this whole thing goes south. Thinking that it was now time for our group sex, Dark and I changed into our stripper outfits. As long as you stay calm, those outfits should get you from here to the exit. The cops aren't letting anybody through the perimeter, so you'll have to do that the old-fashioned way. We were then joined by some other strippers, this time dressed as armed police. Filled with excitement, we ran towards them before we realised that these are not actually strippers, but in fact Noose out to kill us for robbing the casino. They have patrols sweeping the whole place and all the civilians have been evacuated. So if they see you, they'll know it's you. So just stay out of their way, keep your cool and get to the buyer. I then taught this ginger woman on how to do a forward roll. Oh goodness! Oh, goodness. Then stole her car as our getaway driver yet again parked ours miles away. All we had to do now was avoid falling off the ledge of death, steal the police chopper, then land safely at our drop-off location. With getting the Elite Challenge, I pocketed a cool $1.6 million. Now with just over 2 million in cold hard cash sitting in my bank account, I was ready to start investing again. So if you'd like to see what I spent my money on and watch me take a The Humane Labs heist, be sure to join us in the next episode of Riches to Rags. <laughs>